Hello guys, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science, where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram, where I post pictures of my notes, and the reference time for all the topics that I'm going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out, and let's get started. this video we are going to talk about the proximal interphalangeal and distal interphalangeal joint first we will start with the anatomy then we will move on to the ligaments and finally we will move on to the range of motion and finish off with this short topic okay so let's start with the proximal interphalangeal and distal interphalangeal joints the interphalangeal joint is formed by the articulation of the head and the base of your phalanx let us see that first so over here this is your hand this was your mcp right so head of the proximal phalanx articulating with the base of the middle phalanx and then head of the middle phalanx articulating with the base of the distal phalanx and this is the proximal and distal interphalangeal joints it is a true synovial hinge joint that means it will move only in one degree of freedom there is flexion and extension that is the range of motion it will come over here and other components that are present at the PIP joint are the joint capsule which will cover the whole joint the volar plate okay it is in the front somewhere over here attached to the capsule if you want to know more about it exactly where it is located you can check out my video on metacarpophalangeal joint volar plate there I have discussed about the volar plate in detail and it's the same for your interphalangeal joints Next is the collateral ligament that we will come to over here. So the articulation is concave and convex. That is basically the two concave facets. Okay, if you can see over here, this these are the two concave facets that are present at the base, and there it is separated by a ridge. And the other part, okay, this is the first part that is the base. And the head is like a pulley shape. See, you can see this curvature. So that is your head. So that is how the articulation happens at both PIP and DIP. And if you see posteriorly, the articulation is not too long. So the range of motion is not too high. It's only till a certain extent. So the articulation posteriorly, you can see over here the articulation at MCP was so much right so the range of extension was a lot but over here the articulation is not a lot so it can go only till a certain extent maybe neutral and then slightly more so that's why because the articulation the surface of articulation is not present the range of motion for extension is really low and the extension is way lesser in PIP compared to your DIP you can see over here passively if I try to take my and into extension it's not going that much but over here at DIP it is going right see so DIP extension is much more compared to the PIP extension and also about the plates so the volar plates that are present right they increase the stability just like in MCP over here they were increasing the stability similarly they improve the stability and only difference is they are not connected to the DTL what is DTL deep transverse ligament right this spring kind of thing which we had spoken about the deep transverse ligament is present and it is attached to your volar plate in MCP here it is not happening next going on to the ligaments there is the collateral ligament similar to what we saw in the MCP joint but over here it's not that well understood that means we have seen that there are cords and accessory parts that are present for this collateral ligament. In MCP, what was it? It was collateral ligament proper and accessory collateral ligament, right? Those were the two parts and we saw how with flexion and extension they relax and tighten. But over here, it's not that well understood. What we do know is these collateral ligaments especially on the radial side okay radial collateral ligaments are two times more likely to get injured in some kind of sports so radial will be on the radial side right over here over here radial side so what will they prevent they will prevent this movement correct 
so this abduction adduction movement is prevented by a radial collateral and ulnar collateral ligament right and radial collateral ligament they will mostly prevent this movement and they are more likely to get injured compared to your ulnar collateral ligament another pattern that is seen over here just like all the other patterns that we have seen in the hand as you go from index finger to the little finger the ligament which is there the radial collateral and ulnar collateral ligaments both of them they start becoming weaker as you go from index finger to your pinky finger or the little finger now why is this so you can see we use our hand for pinch grip right if you are using a key or something so that time your thumb is putting a lot of pressure on your finger like this so by putting this pressure the ligaments tend to get stronger and stronger with time but you don't really do this action that often right so the ligaments on the index finger are much stronger compared to this then much stronger than this and these are much stronger than this so as you go down to the ulnar side the strength of the ligament that is the collateral ligament becomes lesser and lesser due to the functional demand that is seen next is your range of motion so what do you see in the range of motion there is flexion and extension as i said it is a hinge type of joint there is flexion and extension and it is seen that at pip joint the flexion and extension of index finger is around 110 degrees 100 to 110 degree that would be over here so from flexion to extension the whole range okay and at dip joint over here it is much lesser that is 80 degrees at index finger but again as you move from index finger to the little finger that is from radial to ulnar side the range of motion keeps increasing as you go from radial to ulnar so the so this 110 degree that we were talking about at pip joint becomes 135 degrees as you keep coming towards the little finger see there is so much range compared to this correct you can check it on yourself and then dip again it is just this much over here 80 degrees as you go 10 degree increase is there that is 90 degrees over here so that is what is seen in your range of motion as you go from radial side to your ulnar side this increase in range also facilitates opposition movement with thumb so because this range is improved it can nicely oppose with the thumb over here compared to this correct so this increase in range helps in opposition movement against thumb it also does another thing or you can say another pattern that is seen is because of this increase in range of motion the strength that is produced on the ulnar side is much more the grip strength is much more on the ulnar side compared to the radial side so that's why if you have seen some instruments they are they are designed in such a way that you can hold them grasp them tightly from the ulnar side and the index finger side or the radial side will be slightly wider so that is the pattern that is seen the range of motion increases and also the grip strength increases and this closure on ulnar side is way better compared to your radial side and apart from this if you just look at the hand in general the way the bones are present in design the ulnar side angulation is present naturally which helps the hand for opposition movement and the grip strength so that is something we see in hand the slight angulation the slight increase in the range of motion and grip strength which helps in grasping objects so with that we finish off this topic now let's quickly summarize we saw the pip and dip it has articulation between the head and the base of the phalanx its anatomy is very similar to the metacarpophalangeal joint it has the volar plate just like the metacarpophalangeal joint it has the collateral ligament over here just like the metacarpophalangeal joint and it has the capsule present around so there are lot of similarities but it is very different in a way that range of motion there is just flexion extension there is no passive rotation or much of abduction adduction as seen in your metacarpophalangeal joints correct we saw that the radial collateral ligament are two times more likely to get injured in sports compared to the ulnar side ligament and as we go from radial to ulnar side the range of motion keeps improving the strength improves and also the strength of the ligaments improves along with the grip strength so with that we finish off this topic 
That's all for today guys. Thank you for watching. If you like my content, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. It will really help me out. And thank you for watching.